point, I think what I'm going to do is start with uh, Russ, if you are on. Russ McCracken? Are I you am. There? Perfect. Yes. Can you just share with us any of the insights you gathered over the, or thought about over the recess about how we might proceed with motions in answer to Member Lunge's questions? Any additional insights? <clears throat> sure. Um, Member Lunge raised the question of um, whether the board should make it more formal and explicit that um, the board is considering uh, NPR FPP growth from hospitals from projected to budget uh, and not just budget to budget, which is specified in the FY23 guidance when we look at the 8.6% uh, cap. Um, I think that it makes sense to make that uh, more formal and explicit. Um, the board has some authority under uh, its COVID Flexibility Act that was renewed this year um, to make changes to rules and guidance. Um, I think we are more expanding this way the guidance is applied than actually changing the guidance in this case. Um, I think it's worth noting also that um, when the board sets a budget to budget guidance, I think there's some assumption that a hospital's actual performance and its budget are going to be fairly similar so that we're looking at an actual growth rate. Um, given the, I think, challenges that we've heard from hospitals about budgeting uh, in preparing budgets with the impact of COVID still being felt um, and what we've seen from projected to uh, FY22 projected to budget variances. Um, there's some pretty significant changes there. Uh, so I th and the rules all, our hospital budget rules also very explicit that the board shall consider the performance, actual performance of hospitals relative to their prior budgets. Um, so taking all that together, uh, I um, did speak with uh, member Lunge during the break and um, worked on some uh, suggested motion language that uh, I would be happy to turn over to member Lunge if, if she were so inclined. Great. Board member Lunge, do you want to make a motion? I do. And I think, you know, to, to Russ's point, I think this is belt and suspenders, not absolutely necessary, but I think it makes sense to do. So um, uh, noting that the board shall take hospitals performance with respect to prior budgets into consideration in budget review and as permitted by Act 85 to safeguard the stability of healthcare providers and allow for an orderly regulatory process that is responsive to the evolving needs of the COVID-19 pandemic. I move that we accept the staff's recommendation to allow hospital and PRFPP growth to be reviewed on a projected to budget basis in addition to budget to budget for determining how the hospital aligns with the board's guidance. Great. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Second by Tom Walsh. Um, is there any discussion on this motion from board members? No, hearing none. Um, OK, so all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 OK, any opposed? Nope. OK, so let the record show that it was unanimous in favor of, of that motion, and we'll be using both projected and budget to budget in our decision making. Great. All right, well, thank you for that, Russ, and thank you for that, Board Member Lunge. Uh, at this point, I guess I would start with, um, we can kick it back over to Sarah Lindbergh, and um, we can begin with Southwestern. If, if board members are comfortable with that, we can revisit those slides and see if there is um, an appetite for making a motion or if there's any further questions that anybody has about Southwestern for Sarah and her team.
So I'll just kick it off. Um, I'm comfortable with the staff analysis and I'm comfortable approving the budget as submitted for this particular hospital. But also happy to wait to do a motion if other people aren't aren't quite ready for that. I agree. I'm fine with uh, moving forward on this hospital. I'm good to go as well. OK, great. So so if somebody wants to make a motion, there's some suggested motion language on the slide that will make it easier. I will go ahead um, and so I move we approve Southwestern Vermont Medical Center's budget as submitted with a 6.4 increase from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23 budgeted NPR slash FPP a 9.5 increased overall charges and subject to the standard con budget conditions as presented to the board today. Great, thank you. Is there a second to Robin's motion? Second. Great, Tom Pelham seconds the motion. Is there any uh, discussion on this motion at this time from the board? No. All right, at this point, I will open it up for public comment. If there's any public comment on the motion at the floor, which is to approve Southwestern's uh, Medical Center's budget as submitted. Is there any public comment here at this time? Okay, seeing none, hearing none. Oh, no, Steve Majetic, you have your hand raised. Yes, I, I just, um... Hi, um, everybody. Um, I'd just like to thank the board uh, for their um, uh, motion and uh, uh, on behalf of the, the hospital, um, you know, we're working really hard to make sure that um, we can achieve this budget as most of the hospitals in the state are. And um, again, I'd like to thank the staff uh, for their work and their transparency uh, through this process. Thank you very much. That's Appreciate it. your comment. Yeah, thank you, Steve. All right. Is there any further board discussion on this at this time? All right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposition. So let the record show that there was unanimous approval for for the uh, budget from Southwestern as submitted. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Let's move on perhaps to the next hospital. We have Northwestern up. Is there any uh, questions? Does anybody have any questions for um, Sarah and her team about Northwestern Medical Center? No, I not. OK, I'm not seeing any questions or comments. Is anybody ready to make a motion? There is some suggested motion language. On the screen, I am ready to make a motion. Um, I move we approve Northwestern Medical Center's budget as submitted with a 4.5 increase from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23 budget in PRFPP. A 9% increase to overall charges and subject to the standard budget conditions as presented to the board. Um, I'll just note an explanation that I chose the 9%, uh, which was the updated request from Northwestern as Sarah presented earlier this morning. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Is there a second to this motion? Second. Second by Tom Walsh. Fantastic. Any further discussion on Northwestern's budget at this time from the board? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, I will open it up for public comment. If anybody from the public would like to comment on this motion for us about Northwestern Medical Center's budget, please just use the raise your hand function. Okay, I am not seeing any public comments at this time about this particular budget or this motion. So uh, all those in favor, of Robin's motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. No, none opposed. So again, let the record show that there was unanimous support for Northwestern Medical Center's uh, budget with the slight revision to their uh, overall change in charge to 9.0 instead of 9.4, which was what was submitted, but then updated 
<laughs> up, an updated submission. OK, um, let's move on to the third hospital then that we were going to discuss this afternoon, Copley Hospital. Anybody have any questions or comments for the staff on the Copley Hospital budget analysis? No? OK, is anybody ready? To Sure. Um, I move we approve Copley Hospital's budget as submitted with a 12.1% increase from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23 budget and NPR FPP, a 12% increase to overall charges and subject to the standard budget conditions as presented to the board. Great. I need a second. 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 I got two seconds. I will take, uh, I think Tom Walsh was first in the seconding there. So Tom Walsh will, will count for that one. Uh, is there any discussion by the board at this time about the motion? Yeah. Not seeing any <laughs> uh, discussion from the board at this time. Is there any public comment? Anybody like to make a public comment about the Copley motion at hand? Joe, is that you? It just reads as Copley one guest, but if it is you, feel free, you have the floor. But you're on mute, so you can't have the floor on mute. Okay, yeah, thank you. They give me a generic label, so I apologize. Uh, also want to express my appreciation for everybody. It's a lot of work. These have been very tough couple of years, and I know that the board and all the staff work diligently to try to help us all the run hospitals, so I appreciate that. And I just want to express that, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you for the comment, appreciate it. Any further board discussion about the, the motion? And Copley one, which I think is still Joe, uh, if you have your hand, if you could lower it so I know that you don't have another additional comment. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of approving the Copley hospital budget as submitted in Robin's motion, Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. So let the record show again that there is a unanimous approval for, for uh, Copley's budget as submitted. OK, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Sarah. I think there's some more hospitals that we will like to hear the analysis uh, of. And I think I will leave it up to the board if you want to uh, you know, there, there will be some motion language here that's been presented. If somebody feels like making a motion on any of these hospitals, certainly feel free to. We could go through another set of hospitals and then circle back. I will leave it up to the board to decide as Sarah is going through these slides. Okay, um, so we're going to be looking at uh, Gifford Medical Center. Um, and so, <laughs> They're one of the uh, trickier ones to try to keep apples to apples over time. They're doing a lot of um, uh, really neat reorganization in terms of shared services and whatnot, but that's made some of kind of the longitudinal analysis uh, a little trickier, but uh, they certainly came in with the lowest um, projected to budget increase uh, in NPR and FPP at 1.8%. Uh, they are tracking very closely with that all-payer model growth rate um, from 2019. Uh, and then they also had one of the lowest requests for a change in charge um, with uh, that sugaring out to just over, it looks like $675,000, so $678 thousand eight hundred and eighty seven dollars uh, that they're expecting in net uh, revenue from that charge increase. Uh, you can see their historical charges, which we'll see on the graph compared to inflation in a few slides. Um, so yeah, they again were were on the very lowest uh, projected to budget increase. Uh, their compensation growth actually was a decline. Part of that is that those moving pieces like we talked about, um, but we didn't see any red flags in terms of um, their compensation efforts. Um, the other inflationary growth was a bit above um, our test value, which is from those projections um, from Moody's and CMS. Uh, I'm sorry, from the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and the um, Economic Analysis. 
uh, utilization assumptions uh, are expected to take a decline. There was very good evidence in their record um, that had to do with staffing constraints, uh, changes in utilization, and an EMR implementation. So those all were pretty well documented. We always remember with um, percent change is going to be a lot goofier on small numbers. So, you know, part of that negative 2.7% is just a function of small numbers. Um, and so for the uh, rate, that effective rate is a 2.9 increase, which is, uh, again, the lowest that we're seeing. And um, I was just notified my, my labeling isn't ideal here. But so the, the kind of organization-wide uh, operating margin that they're asking for is 1.5%, knowing that they're got um, the FQHC and other entities underneath it, but at the hospital level, it's 11.4, but um, the kind of the effectual system margin is is 1.5. So I'll, I'll correct those labels and, and repost this uh, after we wrap today. So apologies for that labeling. It wasn't meant to be confusing. Um, so you can see here that um, charge increases um, have typically been um, above inflation uh, for this uh, facility. Uh, but we also know that, um, like a lot of other cause, you know, that um, effective rate is less than the charge increase. So um, that headroom is probably not as big as it looks in terms of inflationary uh, growth comparison. Um, but that also may be um, part of why we're seeing a relatively lower ask in the, the current budget. Would want to do a lot more analysis before we looked into that. Susan, your camera's on. Um, and then we want to uh, take a look at that test that uh, came above the threshold. It's actually a pretty straightforward thing to get to. So um, if you look at, uh, this is again, very much about the small numbers issue, but that fuel uh, oil increase of 47% is just a relatively larger portion of their total operating um, expense budget. And so that, that hits at 4%. So 47% increase is actually pretty modest compared to some of the other fuel increases we were seeing. Um, so um, staff thinks that this is really a kind of um, uh, not a concern at all and does not recommend any um, resulting change to approve their budget. So, um, so essentially we recommend um, that the after just double checking that um, evidence that uh, you approve it as submitted. So at this point, um, I don't know if you wanna think about whether to vote or to uh, keep it moving. Well, let me just ask if anybody from the board has questions for you about what you've just presented for Gifford. Um, allow the board to just digest what you've just shared. And let me just ask, maybe I'll start to give everybody else a moment to um, figure out if they have any questions for you. Can you just clarify what you said? So there was a slide that had the operating margin for the entire uh, for the hospital as 11, well, it should be a, the operating margin for the hospital is 11.4, but recognizing that it cross subsidizes a lot of their other uh, institutions under that umbrella. And so the 1.5% is really what the hospital's net operating margin is after it's cross up, after it's subsidized the other part. parts. Is that accurate to say? That's correct. It's kind of the inverse of Southwestern where they're in Southwestern's a lot of it's at their parent, um, but here Gifford's the parent. Gifford Hospital is the Gifford Medical Center is the parent, and so yeah. there's subsidization that happens underneath that parent corporation. And at the end of the day, the margin that's left for Gifford is the 1.5. Gifford Medical Center that's left is 1.5 after those subsidies for child care and for other entities under their. Well, it's it's yeah, it's like and uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's like the operating margin uh, for that full. In, uh, consolidated system is 1.5 percent, but okay. the hospitals who gets to hold it for them. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I understand. Okay, thank you so much. Um, any board questions at this time for Sarah on Gifford Medical Center? I don't have a question. I would just say that um, I very much appreciated uh, Gifford being modest in their charge and effective commercial rate request. I think in the past we've had some concerns about it, uh, the hospital having relatively high prices, but it looks to me like, um, you know, there's some possibility that that will get more towards the median, especially as with, with this sort of request. So I'm comfortable with approving Gifford as um, submitted and with the staff recommendation. 
I am as well. Um, is there any mm -hmm. other word comments about about whether you're comfortable voting, I guess, is, is a question. So I guess we could try it. If somebody wants to make a motion, we'll see if there's comfort in voting at this time. Does anybody want to make a motion about Gifford Medical Center's budget? I'd like Robin to make a motion. I, I would, but Robin does it far better than I did, Ken. <laughs> this is my official job, the motion maker. Um, a motion so to have Robin make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> You have a line item on your resume that just says motion maker. There you go. Uh, I move uh, to approve Gifford Medical Center's budget as submitted with a 7% increase from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23 budgeted NPR and FPP, a 3.7% increase to overall charges and subject to the standard budget conditions as presented to the board today. We have a second. Well, I saw Tom Pellin muted himself and, and seconded, but I could read lips. Tom, could you just unmute yourself and second for the record? Second for the record. Thank you, Tom Collum. Uh, is there any further discussion at this point from the board on the motion on deck? Nope, not seeing any. So at this point, I will open it up for public comment. If anybody from the public wishes to comment on the Gifford Medical Center budget and the motion on deck, which is to approve it as submitted. I see Dan Bennett, I see your hand raised. Yes, thank you. I just want to thank the board and the staff for their work on this. It's been truly a, a difficult year for everyone and, and um, very much appreciate the work and the, um, that you put into it. So thank you. Thank you for the comment. Is there any other public comment at this time? Okay. Um, at this point, then I guess I will ask, say everybody, anybody in favor, all those in favor of the motion to approve the Gifford Medical Center budget as submitted, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? There's no opposed. So again, let the record show that the board has unanimously approved the Gifford Medical Center budget as submitted. All right, Sarah Lindbergh, you are up next. With all right. So up about, next. Uh, the yeah, so next we turn our attention to Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center. So their uh, budget to budget uh, increase uh, would be 10.4%. Uh, but if we look at that consideration of projection to budget, it is 5%. Uh, we do see some growth uh, above the all pair model. Um, however, uh, that is, uh, again, we have to remember these are relatively small numbers, so those pro proportional increases um, may not be as dramatic as they seem in the system. So um, that that's not any red flags as far as staff were concerned. Um, I'm sorry that I don't consistently treat staff as plural or sing singular. It's an opportunity for growth. Um, and so their overall change in charge was 4.7%, which uh, they were expecting to apply 5.5 to inpatient, 4.9 uh, to outpatient, and 3 to professional. And you can see um, that they also show that, and it's a good reminder that these um, charge increases are not just tied to commercial. Um, and for some of our critical access hospitals, there are substantial um, amounts of funds, particularly from Medic Medicare, that are tied to these charge increases. So just a really important um, factor, um, particularly for those um, reimbursed uh, by Medicare through the critical access hospital um, mechanism. Uh, so that sugars out to a total um, amount of money of uh, 2.9 million in the, the charge increase overall. Um, relatively uh, modest increases historically, which we'll compare to inflation in a few slides. Um, order right away. It looks like I accidentally transposed the order there. Um, so we can see here that um, similar to uh, see, seeing the, the longitudinal above inflation was a little bit longer. Um, than for some of the other uh, hospitals statewide, um, but right in line with what's been happening statewide for 19, 20, and 21. Uh, notably, their approved charge last year uh, is much different than the trend we've seen um, 
in the state where that number climbs substantially. So um, that's just an important factor here. Um, and so now we'll review the test. Uh, and so um, we'll see. So their NPR growth is with uh, below that 8.6%. Uh, their compensation growth at 6.5% is right at the median. Um, here again, it was that other inflationary growth that caused us to just um, just double check. And for utilization, 4.9%, uh, which is a little bit above the median, but that largely had to do with changes um, in uh, some of their uh, service, service mix. Um, 3.2% was the uh, rate increase, which is uh, that commercial uh, effective rate, which is very near uh, the minimum, so quite modest, uh, relatively speaking. Um, and that is uh, designed to support a 1.7% operating margin. Um, so that is the kind of summary of the, how our analysis worked for Mount Escutney. And in their case, it's also pretty clear that um, not so we tried our best to make this as apples to apples as possible, but um, you know people were able to add their own factors, and not everyone identified insurance as a inflationary cost growth. Um, so it's hard to, you know, put that into context with other hospitals. So the fact that they included it, and they have a relatively lower, um, you know, operating uh, expense budget uh, compared to some of the other hospitals, I think that may have um, artificially inflated this number. So I don't see, uh, and the insurance-based increases are right in line with what we're seeing for most of the other hospitals. So um, didn't think that that warranted any uh, recommended changes to their budget. So um, after that uh, assumption check, uh, we would recommend that this is also um, submitted as, uh, approved as submitted. Great, thank you, Sarah. And I just wanna say, you know, I really do appreciate the staff digging into these areas where they're falling out of what these, you know, reasonable assumption margins that the staff has established. So I appreciate the, the additional context that we're getting on all of these. Um, is there, are there any board questions for Sarah uh, and team on the Mount of Scutney analysis? No, I'm seeing shaking of heads. Okay, does there anybody that would like to make a motion? about the Mount Scutney budget. Robin. I, will move. <laughs> I move, we approve Mount Scutney Hospital Health Center's budget as submitted with a 10.4% increase from fiscal year 22 to fiscal year 23 budgeted NPR FPP, a 4.7% increase to overall charges and subject to the standard budget conditions as presented to the board. Great, thank you, Robin. I just need a second. Second. Second from board member Walsh. Appreciate that. So any discussion on the motion on the floor? Okay, seeing none from the board, I will open it up to uh, public comment at this point. Does anybody have a public comment about the motion, which is to approve the Mount Escutney budget as submitted? Okay, I'm not hearing any we're seeing any hands raised, so I'll go back to the board then. All of those in favor of approving the Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center budget as submitted, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no opposition, let the record show that we have unanimous support for approving the Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center budget as submitted. Okay. Sarah Lindbergh, back to you. Great. Um, so the um, final hospital that we had kind of expected to tackle here uh, in this area is Grace Cottage Hospital. Uh, there, this is another case where the budget to budget increase looks a lot different than the projected to budget. So that 15% um, budget to budget increase um, actually ends up being 6.1%. Um, and again, here that growth rate um, is more a function of small numbers than anything else. Um, but, uh, you know, the, again, not raising any red flags in terms of jeopardizing total cost of care targets for the all pair model. 
Uh, you can see that uh, this probably these numbers look pretty familiar, probably for this organization. They're uh, requesting a 5% overall change in charge, um, and which would be applied equally in the charges for inpatient, outpatient, and professional services. Again, another critical access hospital, we see that that charge does have uh, effects on uh, more, more than just commercial um, and ends up being $1.2 million. So um, again, those small numbers, high proportions or relatively higher proportions uh, are less dollars um, when we look at that stuff. So um, when we uh, look at the tests, so the 6.1 uh, is right near the median of the NPR growth from the 22 projections to the 23 budget. Um, they were the highest we saw for the compensation growth. Uh, also, um, so if you review the economist reports, you'll see that um, wage inflation is um, even greater um, in uh, nursing homes and other um, assisted living facilities. That's not, uh, Grace Cottage is a hospital, but given the types of services um, that they're providing, um, that might be part of what's going on here in addition to you know, market factors to compete. Um, I also think that I haven't quite isolated the traveler's component of that, which I think is also inflating that number a bit. So um, I, I I think it's, it's reasonable, it's below the 13.8%. So I don't see a lot of reason to um, push back on that in per, per se. Um, and their other inflationary growth is 0.7%, which is another kind of indicator that they're probably putting the contracted labor um, in a different spot than some other places. So, um, so taken together, I'm good with it. Um, our staff recommend being good with it. Um, the <clears throat> utilization tab was uh, not completed in the appendices. So we'll um, try to look at that through a little bit different lens, um, which is why we're taking a closer look at this. But the effective commercial rate of 4.7% um, is you know, in that kind of 25th percentile uh, range. Um, and then I think there's kind of a um, larger pattern here where the operating margin is booked to be negative. So negative 3.7 is the lowest one. And so, um, you know, we can say that, uh, yeah, yeah, that's in terms of uh, putting uh, pressure on our commercial payers, um, you know, that's that's a very low operating margin to be budgeting with. Um, <clears throat> Their uh, charge requests, um, you know, this is what I think of more like the CA pattern. So it's, we see these um, charge requests being kind of above um, inflation, um, generally speaking, um, but they do see the, a similar bump um, in 22. But again, we're very close to uh, exact inflationary increases in 19, 20, and 21. Um, again, uh, particularly it seems the pattern with cause is that the actual um, net revenue for commercial plans is about 60% of the charges, um, you know, with some variation in there. But again, that um, approved value is probably actu an actual net increase of less um, for their prices. Um, and so, uh, so we uh, looked at the um, utilization numbers that they provided in adaptive. And they also address this in their narrative, um, but essentially they're projecting um, continued uh, utilization rates for everything but physician office visits. Um, so they're projecting a 13% increase and that's just a simply uh, a function of additional staff. So um, they've got some more staff coming on board, so therefore they're able to uh, increase that value. Um, seemed in line with similar FTE to utilization increases um, that we saw this year. So. Um, don't re recommend a <clears throat> change based on that. So with all that context, uh, staff would also recommend that this one be approved as submitted. Great, thank you, Sarah. Does anybody from the board have questions for Sarah about the analysis on Grace Cottage? Okay, I'm not seeing any from, or maybe Tom Walsh, yes, go ahead. Yep, sorry, just a little slow on mute. Sarah, could you um, walk me through a little bit more the um, like the expected change in utilization with an FTE? Yeah, so it's not perfect, um, but we are seeing kind of uh, four outpatient kind of office visits um, around a 10% um, increase. Um, 
it's so relative to the amount of utilization though. So uh, like this hospital again, you know, relatively low on the, the, um, the raw utilization. So, um, but yeah, so they, they, uh, I can pull up the narrative as well if that helps in terms of that. But yeah, uh, I was hoping to get a more formal um, look at that for the board, but I've been running out of time to do everything I hope to. <laughs> um, but if, if from the work you've done so far, the uh, ex the expected increase in utilization they proposed seems in line with what you've seen elsewhere given the on on the new FTEs coming on it seemed in line yes um and if we want to kind of put a pin in that and have us kind of show that um I can be prepared to do that on Friday <clears throat> I'd, I'd appreciate that if you could please That sounds good. Is there anybody else who have other questions about Grace? Or Tom, do you have additional questions about Grace that you would know to Tom Walsh? Okay. Anybody else from the board have additional questions or for I Sarah? Just, I, I just have an observation that this is always a, a little bit of a difficult hospital, but keep in mind that they're non operating money. Uh, whenever they need it, they seem to get it. And so, they, you know, they have a capacity within their community uh to raise money and they have done so in the past when needed so um you know given that uh deep community support um, um i feel comfortable even though they're at the higher end you know of, of some of our metrics thank you tom okay so i think it sounds like there's a little bit of follow-up work that sarah is going to do and we'll come back to this on friday um, and potentially have a vote on Grace Cottage on Friday with some additional information. Um, Sarah, are you, how are you feeling with going through any additional hospitals or does this feel like a good stopping place for you? Um, if it's acceptable to the board, I, there's some homework that I need to tackle here. And if it's possible to take that time to um, make sure I get you material by noon tomorrow so that we are ready to Get us roll our sleeves up Friday. That would be welcome. Um, I don't want to waste folks' time, but <laughs> no, I think that's great. I mean, I think there's been a lot of progress today. I'm very appreciative of all of the progress that you were able to um, make in the analyses that we did. And so, I, you know, giving you more time to do the hospitals that, frankly, are a little bit more complicated and have a little bit more analysis that needs to be done based on the tests that you've run, I think, is really a good use of all of our time. So. With that, is that acceptable to other board members as well? Yes, okay, I'm seeing lots of nodding of heads. So I think at this point in time, I will see if there's a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. So from Tom, a motion to adjourn, and then I need a second. Second. Second from Tom Walsh, wonderful. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Bye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Wonderful. Any opposed? No. Great. All right. Then the motion passes. We are officially adjourned and we will be back on Friday morning at 830 with we'll go through another slate of hospitals. And thank you, Sarah and team, for all your wonderful analysis that allowed us to get through the hospitals we did today. All right. Thank you. Thank you all.